This morning, Henry Earl Dinkins was charged in the death of 11-year-old Briasia Terrell. These charges are the result of a nine-month investigation by the Danforth Police Department and numerous other agencies. We turn our attention now to our next big trial. We're bringing you live today here on Court TV. It is the child sleepover murder case. Opening statement set to happen a little later this morning. The defendant is a guy named Henry Dinkins. He's accused of murdering 10-year-old Briasia Terrell. She belongs to his former girlfriend. They also share another child together. So he's the father of Briasia's half-brother. And uh, she had gone with her half-brother to Henry Dinkins' home, his apartment, back in 2020. And her half-brother came home, but Briasia did not. Uh, there was a nine-month-long nationwide search that ended with a grim discovery of her remains in a wooded area about 20 miles away from where she lived. For more on the background of this case, I want to bring in now Court TV legal correspondent Julia Janae. Julia, good morning to you. This is one I know that you've been following since uh, this young girl disappeared. Uh, what more do we know about what actually happened to Briasia Terrell? Julie, as you mentioned, this was a nationwide search, but certainly one that was very concentrated there in the Quad Cities in Iowa, Davenport, Iowa, where she went missing. Her face was all over those posters, wondering what happened to her. She had been staying, as you mentioned, with her half-brother there at the home of Henry Dinkins and his girlfriend. But the next morning, Dinkins called her mother, Aisha Lankford, and said, she's not here. I don't know where she is. She's missing and that's when police got involved. Now, Dinkins was always under a cloud of suspicion for this. Police were actually asking for more information. They showed his car, his maroon Chevy Impala, saying that this is what he would have been driving around that time. If anyone has any information, let us know. He was placed behind bars initially for an unrelated charge, a violation of probation. So he was behind bars during much of this search, but it took so long for them to find her body. A fisherman who were out at a pond discovered it in March of 2021. This happened in July of 2020. So all of those months, her mother not knowing what happened to her, but the captain of the police department there in Davenport had this to say on that day in March. An autopsy on the remains was conducted by the Division of Criminal Investigation, and we have received confirmation we've received confirmation that the uh, remains are those of Briasia Terrell. You can just hear that emotion in his voice. This was something that the community and wider than their community was invested in and clearly not the outcome that they wanted. But now justice is what they are looking for in the disappearance of this little girl. Julia, it's my understanding that little Briasia was shot to death. Uh, is that your understanding as well through the research you've done. That is what the medical examiner determined. We don't know and we'll likely learn at trial where they believe that she was shot. But we know that the girlfriend of Henry Dinkins said that she actually saw Briasia around 3 a.m. in the morning. The girlfriend woke up to go to the bathroom and noticed that Briasia nor her boyfriend Henry Dinkins were inside of the apartment anymore. And about 30 minutes later, Dinkins came back inside to get something from the house. Uh, she doesn't know what it was, but she looked out the window and she saw Briasia still alive, standing next to his car, that Impala. Uh, so it's unclear exactly where this happened or even why it happened. But there have been allegations by the prosecution that he had some questionable searches on his phone that they said led to the demographic or connected to the demographic of this little girl, that it was child abuse victims that he was looking up uh, mm -hmm. on his phone. Julia, you took the words right out of my mouth. I was wondering if there were allegations of sex assault or evidence maybe discovered at autopsy that this beautiful little child might have been sexually assaulted as well. Do we know? Uh, nothing that we have seen on the record in terms <coughs> of what the medical examiner has said about 
her body, but we know that prosecutors have floated that information to the public. Henry Dinkins was a registered sex offender at the time for his first offense was back in 1990 when he was 70 years old. We don't know the age of that victim and whether it was uh, someone who was under the age of 10, but we know it was uh, someone who he was accused of a sex crime for when he was 17 years old. Uh, we also know that his defense says there is no evidence that there was any sexual abuse, so that may suggest what the medical examiner is going to be able to testify to. But we know that this was Briasia's first time at that apartment. She'd never been there before. Henry Dinkins was going to spend time with his son, the eight-year-old, and the mother did want him to spend time with the eight-year-old. The day that he came over to the house, the mother was working, the grandmother was babysitting, and Dinkins said that Briasia could come along, but that the third child, an older son, couldn't come with him. So that's how she ended up at his house overnight. Oh my, uh, she deserved to be protected. Uh, th this is such a, a tragedy all the way around. Uh, for Henry Dinkins, today is the big day. This is the day that he's going before the judge. Uh, talk to us please, Julie, about what we can expect when court begins this morning. A court is going to begin in about 30 minutes there in Iowa. Keep in mind, this is not a jury trial. Just a couple of days ago, Henry Dinkins waived his right to a jury trial. So he is actually going to go forward with this evidence in front, or the prosecution rather, is going to go forward with this evidence in front of a judge only, a bench trial. So that may impact how things go inside of this courtroom, especially when you think about those prior bad acts that the mm -hmm. prosecution wants to bring in and the defense wants to keep out. The judge knows about those prior bad acts, but could, uh, reserve not to take them into consideration when making a ruling in this case. That's a great point, Julia. The judge is going to know he's a registered sex offender. Uh, Julia, Janae, thank you so much for that early update. We'll have more reporting from you throughout the day here on Court TV.